the policy. How to deal with economic bubbles has been a controversial topic. One school of thought has argued that a central bank should persuade, uh, pursue aggressive monetary easing after bubble bursts. This line of thinking is based on belief that bubbles are difficult to spot beforehand, and central banks can merely mop up uh, <coughs> debris or collapse uh, bubbles. But I beg to differ. Quite often, bubbles are too elusive to identify even when they are crashing. On top of that, when accumulated excesses are being unwound in the aftermath of bubble bursting, the efficacy of central bank's easing policy is materially reduced, as we are now witnessing. So what should we do? First and foremost, central banks should be attentive to both prevention of bubbles and the mitigation of their consequences. I believe this symmetrical approach is important. Central banks should remain vigilant as to whether excesses are lurking in the economy. As economic imbalances pile up enthusiastically, a narrow focus on price stability makes it more likely for policymakers to overlook dangerous signs emerging in the wider economy. This is exactly where macroprudential perspective comes in. Financial imbalances typically manifest themselves in a sharp credit expansion, outside leverage, soaring asset prices, or a combination of those. These are the parameters central banks should watch carefully. But excesses can appear in other forms too. The challenge for central banks is that economic imbalances have a long formative period, so to speak, spanning much longer than normal time horizon of monetary policy implementation. Therefore, if we focus narrowly on short-term movements in consumer price inflation, this could have an unintended consequence of fostering the creation of bubbles. In response to the bursting of information technology bubble early this century and deflation scare associated with that, monetary policy was eased on a global scale and for an extended period of time. Unfortunately, this has proved to be one of the contributing factors to the global credit bubbles and the resulting mess in the global financial system. Central banks should not be hesitant in pursuing aggressive monetary easing when economic conditions warrant. In a severe economic crisis, policymakers have to be careful not to mistake a temporary rebound in the economy or a false dawn, I would say, for a genuine recovery. But there is no economic crisis that never ends. So central banks should also be mindful of a timely exit from those aggressive easing measures. A late exit can be an entry into something worse. Finally, let me add that monetary policy alone cannot prevent the recurrence of boom and bust oscillations. For example, a hot host of uh, issues remains to be addressed in the regulatory and the supervisory <laughs> arena as well. Since I am almost uh, 40 minutes into my speech, I would like to finish with a final message. What we are <laughs> confronting is not a garden variety recession. 